Jazakallah khair everyone for joining us. Uh, Muslim Ummah of North America is welcoming everyone for this uh, beneficial session. And um, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Saleh, our respected and beloved uh, Sheikh. Um, and our brother is actually students of our uh, Sheikh, um, Sheikh Saleh. So inshallah, this evening we will learn um, some um, very beneficial knowledge from his, uh, inshallah, uh, his learnings. And he's an uh, associate professor um, in University of North Carolina, Primberg, Brother Abdullah Noman. Um, he's a professor of finance uh, at the university. Um, so we uh, have been known with the brothers and invited him in several other pro uh, programs. And he gave very beautiful um, uh, presentations on this very uh, specific and important uh, topic. So this evening, inshallah, we we are looking forward to learning some beneficial knowledge from our brothers, and hopefully this knowledge will benefit us and shape our knowledge, inshallah. With this, I would uh, request our brothers to please commence the presentation. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen wa ala sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una. Wanfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilma. I begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I praise Him, we praise Him, we glorify Him, we seek His aid and assistance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from that knowledge which He has already given us. I am really humbled and honored to be able to be here and present here. It's one of my uh, memorable days in my life that I was able to speak directly with my uh, Sheikh Salah Asawi, who I admire a lot and I learned a lot of things from him. And obviously, I mean, I'm really honored once and again I'm saying that when I read his fatawa, for example, I learn fiqh and Islam from him and other members of Amja. So in my life, very briefly, this was the time when I came to know about this. When I attended in Houston, in this city, I'm not from this city, Majma uh, Fuqaha Sharia Abi America, they held a um, conference here in 2019, March 1st to 4th. Um, and that was on contemporary financial issues, buying real estate and retirement accounts. Obviously, prior to that, I was teaching finance for long, and I am also a certified financial planner, CFP. But then I was approaching finance and financial planning from a secular perspective, although I'm a Muslim, but that was my perspective. Since I attended that conference, I relentlessly tried to bring these two areas of knowledge together so that Muslims can benefit from what the Islamic scholars have done for us, what they have produced, and what we learn in colleges and universities. So obviously, when I stand in my own class and I'm teaching financial planning, obviously there, there is no mention of Islam, nothing. But then, obviously, for Muslims, whatever we do, it has to be compatible with Sharia, compatible with the deen of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us. So my effort is a very small and humble effort to bring these two areas together and make the community in general aware of these topics. So I know that we have already... Um, it is nine, uh, sorry, 8.41. And let me begin. The title of today's to uh, talk is Benefits of Financial Planning for Muslim Families in the USA. So mostly I'll be focusing on 
uh, the U.S. perspective. Uh, so it is not for other countries because every country has its own financial system and financial uh, you, know, you know scenario so that those are different so i will be focusing on the us perspective only but before i uh, go forward it is very important for me to bring your attention to the fact that disclaimer that i have written here the disclaimer that this presentation is purely for the purpose of sharing information and creating community awareness. It should neither be construed as investment advice, I'm not giving you an investment advice, nor fiqhi advice, none of them, okay? So this is just an informa information session. This is what I wanted to uh, tell you before anything else. So let's move ahead. Whenever we talk about financial planning, which is the topic of tonight, the financial planning, if you open any financial planning book, the first thing that we look at, I don't know why this is happening. Okay, so. <laughs> I do not, no, I mean, these are the, slides that uh, I don't know how it is there, but maybe from brother's uh, other laptop. So please ignore that for now. The reason you see some other language, originally I'm from Bangladesh, okay? So when I presented this, uh, I was presenting in front of Bangladeshi community. So whatever I write in Arabic and in English, I wanted to add the Bangla Tarjuma translation as well. So that's why you see it there. But that's fine. And tonight, obviously, the, the, the event is open for everybody. So the first step is in planning. Now, obviously, there are, uh, you know, some people who would say, is the idea of planning something compatible with Islam or not? Right? A as an ordinary person, I had this thing in my mind as well. So if you do not have that question, then it's okay. But if you do have, then I will try to present some case for the importance of planning, okay? Now, like I said, when you open any book of financial planning, you see the first step that you set up the objectives and goals. Why do you do that? Why do you want to have the planning? Even when you want to go somewhere, you have to have a plan. You open an app, Google Map, you see destination and your location, right? So where you want to go. That's the first thing. You need to identify where I want to go. Even if you, if you know that what is your location, if you do not know where are you going, then obviously there's no point of having that exercise. So now for Muslims, for Muslims, For Muslims, how do you determine the objectives in life? I leave it with you. Think about it and ask our scholars to help you on that. But I'm going to give you a small perspective of objective in your life. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran. I'll give you just one example. In Surah Al-Qasas, Surah number 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us it's a story, a perspective of Qarun. You know, he was a very rich person in the time of Prophet Moses, alayhi salam. So in that story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing this verse, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Wabtaghi fi ma ataka Allahu dar al-akhira wa la tansa naseebaka min ad-dunya wa ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ You know, we get something very uh, helpful for us to understand what should be our objective. Look at the English translation. So, but seek through that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, the home of the hereafter. So whatever we have in terms of wealth, of in wealth and income, we Muslims use that wealth and income to seek their 
position in Jannah. Right? That's our ultimate goal. But at the same time, do not forget your share of this world. Correct? Because we live in this earth, we do good deeds so that we can ultimately earn pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are able to get into his Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to get into Jannah, inshallah. You see the point I'm trying to make? So the objectives of Muslims in America or in anywhere else should be to set a financial goal or goals and objectives which are in line with the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah. Something that will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it clear to everybody what I'm trying to say? The objective has a basis. And that basis is pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what we have already had? All right, so now, now that we know what is our objective, so there are many different words that laymen, ordinary people, we use interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. Like sometimes we say money, sometimes we say income, sometimes we say wealth, but those are different words. They have their own meaning in the books of finance. Let, let's take it simply. What is money? Money is something which is a medium of exchange. We use money, right, you know, for the transactions. Now, what are the purposes of money? Normally, when we ask this question, something that comes to your mind and my mind is that we're going to spend this money you know, for our own pleasure and to buy something. But here's the thing. From a financial perspective, from a financial planning perspective, we need to identify that there are many different objectives that can be fulfilled with your money and wealth. Right? So income is a flow that you receive per period. So income per month, income per week, income per year. Wealth is not part something. Wealth is a stock. When income, imagine income as a stream of water which is flowing and then we have a place like a pond where this income after whatever is left over is being added to. That pond is your wealth. So wealth is a static concept. So um, how's, your, how's your wealth? Your house is wealth, not income. Your savings in the bank is your part of your wealth. It's not income. So that's the difference. Anyway, so the four purposes in the books of finance that we recognize are number one is spend. So we, we have our wealth and money or income. Let's, let's use it simply to spend now. When we say spend, we spend it now to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will spend it for that. If something that does not displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not spend our money on that, correct? Second is save. Saving is another purpose. What is saving? Technically speaking, saving is spending later. You save so that you can spend later. You see, ultimately it's the same thing. Then investing. You use your wealth and your money or income to invest. Why? Again, you spend even for the later, but meanwhile, you want your money to grow. That is the investment. Now, obviously, Sheikh Salah Asawiyah said, what is a halal investment, what is not permissible, that's the area of the fuqaha. They will tell you, right? You can ask them, and like I said, this book is full of fatawa. They tell you where to spend, where to invest, how to invest, what is, for example, in this book, scholars say that you can't invest in bond because bonds generally give you interest, riba, which is haram, according to this book. And you can invest in a stock, but not all of them, some Sharia compatible stocks, and so on. So that's not my purpose. The purpose is to bring this to your attention that this is what we do with our money. So sometimes we just get a job, we start to work, and we are working, we are receiving money, we do not know what is happening. We see money is coming in, income is flowing in, but no idea what is the purpose of this, correct? So it is time for us to close our eyes and see what is happening, what I'm going to do with my money that I'm receiving from my you know, office, from my job, from my business, whatever it is. So now, if you ask me whether planning is something that is compatible with Islam, can we plan for the future? 
does it go in line with Islamic teaching? Remember, there is a word that we all know, regardless of what is your language, it's called tawakkul, correct? Tawakkaltu ala Allah, right? In English, simple translation is reliance. What is it? Reliance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us in his sunnah that tawakkul is the very foundation of iman and Islam, correct? We must rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah At-Tawbah, for example, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim, Qul, lan yusibana illa ma katab Allahu lana huwa maulana, wa ala Allahi fal yatawakkalil mu'minoon. And say, Never will be, never we, never will we be struck except by what Allah has decreed for us. He is our protector. Who is our protector? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? And upon Allah, let the believers rely. This is the tawakkul that we have in our hearts. We believe in that, and also Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al Ahzab, "A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan rajim wa tawakkal ala Allah wa kafa billahi wakila." And rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs. He is sufficient for us if we rely on Him. Correct? So this is the teaching of the Quran. Now we know that Quran and Sunnah, they go hand in hand. Am I correct? Whatever Quran teaches us, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam implements that and shows his companion how to understand Quran. Am I correct? That's the reason whenever somebody tries to, you know, create a gap between Quran and Sunnah, that is not correct. The Quran and Sunnah, they go hand in hand. Always we need to remember that. Now let's see how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught his companions tawakkul. I'll just give you one example. We don't have much time, obviously. So precaution, planning ahead, and tawakkul. Are they related? Look at this hadith in which, hadith Hassan, this one, narrated by At-Tirmidhi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is teaching his companion the interpretation and meaning of tawakkul. So Anas bin Malik narrated that a man said, O Messenger of Allah, shall I tie it, meaning the camel he was holding, and rely, meaning upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or leave it loose and rely. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, tie it and then rely. In Arabic, you have it in front of you. Um, قال سميت انس بن مالك يقول قال رجل يا رسول الله اعقلها واتوكل او اطلقها واتوكل قال اقلها وتوكل you see the implementation of our tawakkul so we have to understand that we have our own responsibility please focus on that because that is giving trouble i don't know why so yeah please focus on that um, maybe I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything else open here. No, we, we can do different. Something's happening on that one. All right, so let's, let's move ahead. So you see, from this, we understand that on the one hand, we will rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bottom of our heart. We believe in that. On the other hand, we have to also take steps that is our duty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own sunnah, sunnatullah, right? He will create a sabab for something to happen. We have to put our own effort. Is it clear to everybody what I'm talking about? There is no clash between reliance, tawakkul, and planning and precaution. Also, we see in, in another famous hadith uh, narrated by Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to visit me. Very quick, we don't have time, so I'm just giving you the English. During my ailment, which had been aggravated during Hujjatul Wada, I said to him, meaning Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you see, O Prophet, how sick I am. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have much property, but have no heir except only my daughter. May I, he's asking, the companion is asking, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may I give two thirds of my property in charity? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is replying, no. I said, meaning uh, the sahab, Sahabi said, uh, half of it? He said, no. I said, one third? He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, one third is too much, for to leave your heirs rich is better than to leave them poor, 
begging of others. Nothing you spend, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continues. Nothing you spend seeking Allah's pleasure, but you shall get a reward for it. Even if it, even for what you put in the mouth of your wife, Rawahul al Bukhari, Sahih al Bukhari has narrated this. You see the perspective and the teaching of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it has implication for our life as well. We move ahead and then we also see how Prophet Wasallam is teaching his companions to plan ahead of time. So look at this hadith. Rasulullah is saying, Iqtanim khamsan qabla khamsin, very famous hadith, right? Take care of five, take advantage for five before other five things happen. What are the five things? So look, I break down here. Five components of this hadith. Shababaka qabla haramik. Your, your youth before your old age, does it relate to your and my life? Is it limited to only deen or also look at the generality of the hadith? How about your dunya? If you are not strong enough, will you be able to travel to mosque to pray? If, if we are sick and ill, lying, we don't take care of our body, our you know, health. What happens to us, we are not able to, Ramadan is coming. Is it important for us to take care of our health so that we are able to observe Ramadan, correct? So, shababaka qabla haramik, your youth before your old age, wa sihhataka qabla saqamik, and your health before your illness, wa ghinaka qabla faqarik, your riches before your property, wa faragaka qabla shogalik, your free time before your work, and wa hayataka qabla mautik, and your life before your death. You see, in every component, there is an element of planning. You think ahead. Is it correct? You see the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Now, now that we are convinced that we need to have an objective and we know that planning is not incompatible with Islam, it is compatible with Islam. Alhamdulillah, right? We can plan. Now, like I said, when you open the Google map or app, you know, whatever the app you use, you have two things to enter. Number one is your, say, destination. I want to go to Houston. But where from? Excuse me. I do not know where I am. So there is an option, your location, right? Do you see the your location? Do you know your location? If you don't know, then obviously you'll not be able to get there, correct? Now I'm going to ask you to understand what is your location and what is the benefits of financial planning today. So... Your current financial status is in the middle. And your need and your objectives and goal are, say, case one. You need more because your family is growing. Obviously, halal way and your objectives. Remember, we said that is compatible with the teachings of Islam, right? There's no question about that. Now, so your case number one, situation that what you need, you are earning less than that. What you need, you are far from that. So you're below the case one. Then, right, you understand that I want to go there, but currently I am here. Now you have your own planning. You try to understand, okay, how can I get there? But if you do not know where you are, then obviously you will not be able to plan. Case two, your objectives and goals is the yellow one, your objectives and goals, and what you have already more than what is your objective. Then you can plan accordingly. Look, my kids, for example, not my kids, but I'm giving an example. My kids have all grown up. They have their own families now. Everyone is employed. They are not relying on me anymore, but I have still a good job. I'm making a lot of money. What do I do? Now, sometimes we ignore and say, look, this is my money. I'm just earning. This is my property. Like, this is the mentality of Qarun. He said that in the Surah Al-Qasas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. Qala innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. That was the claim of Qarun. We, we don't say that. We say that, okay, now that I have more than what I need, what my objective is, then I can spend the additional amount of money to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more than before. So you identify where you are, and then you can either be below that your original need and objectives or above it. If you're already 
you know, you have enough money and you don't need more. I'm not asking you to leave your job. What I'm asking you to think about how much money I need. And if you have some extra, use that money to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help the poor and to donate to the mosque and help build this kind of places in the community. You see, and but if you have not reached that level, level, and if you still have need, and your kids are growing, kids are small, then think about them first, right? It's your responsibility to take care of your family, and then you want to get there. So this is the benefit of why Muslims today need to identify where they are and where they want to go. See that now the Americans, secular students, are learning these things in the classroom. I teach this class is both at the undergrad and MBA level. I teach them. And I'm teaching them exactly the same thing. And they're benefiting and they're preparing the plan. And they submit it at the end of the semester. There's a project. They need to identify. Every student identifies where they are, hypothetically, and then they create a plan for future. Now, Muslims, do they need this information? Do they need this knowledge or not? Right? Muslims have to be a strong community so that they can fulfill the obligation of da'wah. If I am weak, and I'm always busy about my own family, my own self, how can I spare some time and do the da'wah work? Do you see that, what I'm saying? So it is very important for the Muslim community. Now, planning for life, we just you know, uh, talked about, so I'm gonna skip this. Now, what are the elements of financial planning? In a standard textbook, there are seven different elements, points of financial planning. So uh, I'm asking Brother Iqbal here how much time I have so that I know I will either go very quick or I can you know, spend some time. It depends on you. But these are the seven things we learn in the classroom. And also, look, like I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me opportunity to become certified financial planner. I have this designation CFP, and I have been doing pro bono voluntary advising, financial advising, over three years now. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm uh, attached with many non-profit organizations who call me and we have Zoom sessions and I advise them on these areas. The question I'm trying to ask you, whether you have ever sought, ever asked anybody about whether you need any planning or not, or we just think we are good, we are just, Life is going on, you see. We don't have time to think about those things. So the areas is emergency funds, and I've added one thing, zakat payment. This is not obviously in the standard textbook. Then we have risk management and insurance. Then we have credit and debit planning, debts planning. Then we have education savings for yourself or for your kids. Then employee benefits and retirement savings. One day, we all will retire if we are alive by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Have we planned for that time? Like we said, yes, we have tawakkul 100% on home Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But are we supposed to do something as well, right? In addition to that tawakkul which is in our heart, do we have to do some action? So we have to plan for that. Then tax planning, this is tax season, it's coming up. And then American tax system is one of the most difficult tax systems in the entire world. And if we are unaware, what we do normally, we go to a tax, um, you know, Person, per, say accountant or anybody CPA, normally we go to CPA and the CPA will take care of your taxes. But sometimes you need to ask what is happening? What is happening behind the screen? Right? Can I understand what is happening there? So that is another way. And then finally win a, will and estate planning. One day we will all nantakilo ila jiwarillah, right? One day we will all go to meet our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to meet him with good deeds. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our prayer, our dua, and our good deeds. Taqabbal minna, ya Allah, taqabbal minna saliha amalina, ya Rabbal alameen. So that we are able to earn pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is reality, whether we like it or do not, right? So these are the seven areas. I will be quickly, so how much time I have? Like 15, 20? 20. 20 minutes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you for your generosity and your patience. Now, before, because we have 20 minutes, I'm going to take a break, yoga break. Stretch your hand, please. And up. And don't hit your friend next, okay? Right? And you are allowed, if you want, to stand up a little bit and sit down again, right? Then you will be able to pay attention again. 
See, it's not, it's not uh, I mean, it's, it's natural. Number one, finance, I'm a student of finance. Finance is a dry subject, you know? We always play with numbers, and people, a lot of people, they don't like numbers, correct? But this is what it is. This is what it is. So uh, it's, it's kind of boring as well, so I'm trying to make sure that we have full attention here. So within the next 15 minutes, I'll try to go quickly. Uh, we are in uh, here, like on 11th, um, um, what is called slide? We have a few more to go. N number one, very quickly, emergency funds and zakat. According to the standard textbook measure, I can tell you, and the, the way it is practiced in the industry, both but the way we teach it in the class and the way it is practiced in the industry. If you go around, have you, have you seen Edward Jones in this area? Financial advisors, financial planners. No, you don't see that because you don't need that. Once you start to make a lot of money, then you look for some advisors, right? This is what it is. So before my first child was born, I, I never knew that something called diabar. So after, because I, I never needed that, right? So when my first child was born, my wife said, go get diaper. I said, what is diaper? I looked it up and I said, no, I, this is something I've never seen in any store. She said, go to the nearest store. You will see diaper right there. Now all these diapers are in front of me because now I'm looking for that. You see what I'm saying? So you will see all those places when you need that. So going back to this. So we say in the classroom and also this is the practice of the industry that if you are the only earner in your family, then you must have at least six months worth of uh, expenses. You have enough financial resources, either in money or in other form, that will be sufficient for six months at least. Why? Because in case of any emergency that happens, right, say for example, uh, we don't want it to happen, God forbid, that you or we lose job. There's an accident, something happens beyond our planning, right? Then somebody has to take care of the bills that you have to pay this and that. If there are two people who are earning in the family, then at least three months, because if one is in trouble, the other one is still making money. You see, if he's still earning. So this is the simple thing. Now, another thing I want to add here is wherever you put cash, remember, obviously, the fiqh issue, you have to be careful we cannot earn interest and how that work, what we do with the interest, that is the question of the fiqh question. Inshallah, uh, Islamic scholars will answer that question. And we know for sure that interest in riba is haram, right? It is not allowed in Islam. So that's not my part here. And then uh, another issue is zakat. Now, why I brought that up, obviously it's not in the textbook. What happens, many a times we find that, look, we have saved money in many places, right? But we need cash to pay zakat. Sometimes we don't have the cash. Sometimes our sisters say, for example, they own a lot of assets, fixed assets, illiquid assets, but they don't have any cash. Can it happen? We sometimes have a lot of assets, but we don't have any cash. It's zakat time. What do I do? So you have to plan in advance. Suppose you have saved in some bank, right? You have saved money, which is subject to zakat. Now it's time for you to give zakat, but you have already saved it in the bank. You don't want to take it out, withdraw it. So where the money is coming from? Now you start and I start to think, my goodness, that's a lot of money, $1,000, $2,000 zakat. I can't give that zakat, right? So we have to plan ahead of time, at least one year ahead, what is coming up next year? How much zakat? I have been paying zakat by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I know my nisab and I know that I, have to, I will have to pay zakat. Plan ahead of time, right? So this is important. Next. Risk management and insurance. What is risk? Risk is something that happens without your expectation. That's right. Something that you didn't expect. If, if, if you have expected something to happen, it is not risk. Is it clear to everybody? If you have expected that this could happen, then this is not risk. <laughs> Don't worry about it because you are expecting it to happen. It's known. It's knowledge. And risk is uncertain. Something that you are not expecting to happen, but that can happen. My question to you, my respected brothers and sisters, if something goes wrong in your planning, how about your car, your house, and your other assets that you have um, owned for some time, see how can you minimize the risk? How can you manage the risk? There are some halal 
uh, methods to minimize your risk. There are some haram methods. But ask your scholars how to manage it. For example, if you go to Amja website, if you open this book, generally speaking, insurance, life insurance, and other insurances are haram because it contains gharar and riba and other un-Islamic elements. But under some conditions of haja or darura, necessities, scholars will be able to tell you when you are uh, able to Oh, 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 it's frozen for some reason. So it's right here now. Oh, no, we see it here. Okay. The previous one. No, okay. So le look, let me con uh, summarize it in this way. Identify risk. Some, there are some risks that you yourself can manage. I myself can manage. Right? We take care of our front doors, back doors, where we are parking our cars, right? All these things are within our... Uh, what is called capability, we can take care of that. But there are some things that are beyond your uh, capacity. So find out what you can do, and in case that happens, what happens to your family in your presence and your absence? Think about it, find a way out, seek out uh, to uh, find out what uh, Sharia says and what scholars are telling you. Then comes credit and debt planning. One of the things about Americans is that they live on paycheck to paycheck. Am I correct? Right? We, we receive a paycheck and then we spend money and we are out of money and we wait for the next one. And then in between, if we need money, we borrow money. It's very easy. We have a credit card, correct? We just swipe and we get everything. Now, because of this ease of getting credits and loans, we sometimes cannot escape borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. Brothers and sisters, think about it. How much is in, light, in line with your planning? The fact that you have a credit card with limit of $20,000 doesn't mean that you keep spending money on and charging that credit card, right? So there has to be a limit on the debt and the loan. Even the car you're buying, say for example, you bought a car but you didn't have money to buy, pay for the entire car, you borrowed money, you, you borrowed money to you know, buy this house. There has to be a limit. Think about it, how much I can borrow. And it, it affects your credit score and your future ability to borrow more in time of need. If you have reached your maximum now, when you need that additional borrowing, you'll not be able to uh, borrow that money. OK, then education saving. Many of you, I see faces are young. Uh, mashallah, you will one day become father, and some of you are already father of young children, they will go to college. And college education is not cheap, correct? Inshallah, if your kids, if our kids get scholarship, mashallah, alhamdulillah, right? No problem. But in case if they don't, even if they get scholarship, sometimes that's not sufficient, correct? You have to pay for room and board, this and that. Plan ahead of time that one day your kids will grow up and obviously, you may also need to go back to college. So same thing, when I came here in this country as an immigrant, I went back to college, and I had to have my education in this country. Only then I was able to get a job here by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is important to have a planning for education, and education is the backbone of our community. Then we come to employ benefits and retirement saving. Wherever you're working, even if you, are, if you have your own business, there are many, many options for you to save money. And some of them are freely given to you by your employer. And some of them you have to, you know, contribute, right? So read this Amja website and their fatwa and they, what they say about. Generally speaking, according to Amja fatwa website and this book conference, 401k, for example, is is halal as long as you invest in halal stocks, not bonds, right? So if your employer is giving you something for free, go and take it. It's a gift from your uh, uh, employer. But if you have any doubt, obviously what we do, we go back to our scholar, right? And to see whether this is halal or haram. But then you need to go back and look, even if you have a, a retirement account, we all need to have the username and password 
go to your account and see where your money is invested. If you didn't opt in anything, they will automatically put that money in the bond, which is haram. So go inside your own account and move your money away from bond to stock. Right? So this is what we need to think about. The sixth, tax planning. Like I said before, American tax system is the one of the most complex tax system, and it's good for those who file taxes on your behalf because we don't understand, so they understand. But look, here's the thing. In this tax system, there are two words we need to be aware of. One is tax avoidance. Another one is tax evasion. Tax avoidance is legal. Tax evasion is illegal. Tax avoidance is allowed in this country. The government is saying, do this, do this, you can avoid taxes. And evasion is not to report your income properly, which is haram again, because we Muslims cannot cheat anybody, right? So, but sometimes we do that, which is not correct approach. Muslims cannot do that. So I'm making $100,000 and I'm reporting something less, and then I'm you know, trying to justify it by saying that I am cheating non-Muslims. That's not correct. Nobody will allow you to do that, right? Muslims are always upright, and they are always reporting what is true. But the government is telling you, look, if you do, do, if you do this, do that, then you'll be able to avoid some taxes. For example, in the retirement planning, if you save in Sharia-compatible retirement accounts, that saving is tax-free. And it grows tax-free. And then when you actually retire, you withdraw your money, then you pay tax on that. But by that time, you are in lower tax bracket. We know that there are several tax brackets. You know, these things we should be aware of. The government has many ways for you to reduce the tax burden. Right? So explore that. Finally, will and estate planning. Everybody hates to talk about debt, including myself. Right? But this is the reality. Correct? I used to be a young person, right? Then I grew up. Now everybody calls me like an uncle. Look, very quickly I'm growing up and I'm approaching that age. It's not very far. So we have to plan today what happens after my death and after your death. Do we understand what happens after my death? There are two things. Obviously, when we normally you know, listen to a khatira, for example, and religious talk, normally our scholars will remind us what will happen in the hereafter. Of course, we have to get ready for that. We need to have our own a'mal, good deeds, so that we can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those good deeds and we can expect mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once you leave, something happens to your family here too. Am I correct? Have I planned for that? Have I planned for that? Will, writing a will, which is known also as the last will, in line with Islamic rules, is allowed in America. A lot of people do not know this. You can write, speak with the masjid you know, administration, they will help you on that. You can write a will, and there are so many will writing websites, I have given some of them here too. They will help you, and sometimes they charge you for a complex situation, $99, for, to protect your million dollar property. You see that? So what happens? Who gets what, and how much is going where? That's something that we don't want to think, because nobody wants to think about that. Now, they, they, look at the religious benefit of will and estate planning. Once you start to think about your death and plan, okay, after I die, this property goes there, that property goes there, you are also reminding yourself that one day, inshallah, we will die, right? You are reminding yourself. By doing this planning exercise, you and I are, uh, we are actually reminding ourselves. Do you see that? It's not very far from today. So, now obviously, I'm, I'm concluding and two more uh, slides. So far, what I've said, mostly like a secular thing, and in the classroom, the students will learn exactly the same things. American students will learn very similar things that we have been talking about, except for what is halal and what is haram. Correct? Now, there is a special issue in wealth management for Muslim families. If Muslims fam Muslim families are strong in America, 
Muslim communities will flourish. Am I correct? If Muslim families are weak, Muslim communities will not flourish. Right? Of course, we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything is happening by the will and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, undoubtedly. But then we also have to do our part. And if somebody is always, like I said before, always worried about what is happening to his family, his, himself and herself, his wife, he or she will not be able to focus on other obligations, community building obligations. So it is important for us to understand that we have to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we also at the same time, we have to be very cautious about future plan. And also, we have to, you know, once I know, like I showed you before, where we are, if we know that, look, this is what I need for my families. This is, I need, for example, $100,000 a year. I'm just giving an example, but alhamdulillah, I'm already getting $200,000 salary. I don't, I don't need that much money. If you don't have any plan, you just, you just receive that money. It comes to your bank account. You're happy. But if you have a plan, you say, look, I have a lot of surplus. Even with after all this investment, retirement, I have still some surplus. That money can go to community building. Am I correct? Charitable planning to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. For your family, for the needy, for the propagation of Islam, for da'wah. Who is going to do that? Those people who are... Alhamdulillah, Muslims spend in both condition. Okay? When they are in difficulties and when they are in ease. In both conditions. Alhamdulillah. But those who are, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them uh, prosperity, more money, they are expected to spend more and plan to give more. Saving and investing is permissible versus impermissible assets. You need to be aware. A lot of people do not even think about it. It's autopilot, like your money is being invested in your retirement account, 401k, 403b, 457b. A lot of things, instruments are there, and you don't even know what is happening. Well, I do not know what I do. Just go to the HR and ask them for the username and password. They're going to give you, and you open that account, you go inside and see where your money is being invested. And move your money away from halal thing and get into halal, halal thing. And purify your income earned from imp impermissible assets. If you have already earned some money, ask our scholars, we ask our scholars, how can we purify our haram income? Where to give that money? Can I keep the original amount that is halal? Or should I, have to, you know, should I you know, donate everything? They will tell you, they will guide you, right? And finally, paying zakat on applicable assets. Your and my financial planning has to include an element of zakat planning. You and I need to plan for zakat. How much money I have to pay and where that extra money will come from. If you have saved, say, $300,000 over the course of your lifetime, then you will be paying, obviously, for every $100,000, which is zakatable, right, after calculation, then you will pay 2.5% on that. But where with this money, $2,500 will come from? Do you have that liquid cash, right? You cannot simply, you know, sell something because if you try to sell something, you may be selling at loss. So it is better to place ahead of time. So these are the things I wanted to share with you. And there are some websites. You can take a picture of this. Um, will help you to write wills and, um, uh, you know, your estate planning. And I want, I want to conclude this session first by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me if I have said something wrong, I make this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina wa akhta'ana. Definitely, I have made mistakes. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la tu'akhidna in nasina wa akhta'ana. If I have made any mistake, if I have erred, if I uh, said something wrong, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wala yaghfiru dhunuba illa anta. Right? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives me. This is what is my first thing. And then I make sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everyone, for myself. Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramik. Waghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. You see the powerful dua. You see that? That, oh Allah, grant me enough what, what you make lawful so that I may dispense with what is what you make unlawful. I don't want that. And also enable me your by your grace to dispense with all but you. All I am looking towards is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وما توفيق إلا بالله جزاكم الله خير I really appreciate your patience and that you have listened to me جزاكم الله خير and thank you brothers who have organized this session